Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. Coach, I wanted to – it's like a broken record, but I wanted to mention a couple at Noah Gurley's key, key place. He created a turnover in the second half. It was big, and then he got a big offensive rebound put back that kind of iced the game. And then I also – my second part is – you just got through playing against a team that's more of a half-court team, slows it up. How is, do you think that will help you against San Diego State? I know you had not had a chance to dive into them yet. Yeah. I, haven't, I, didn't, even watch, I didn't even watch the uh, San Diego State game today. I was busy still watching Maryland film, you know, with the short turnaround. I just – I'm a big fan, but when we got a game to win, I, I try to lock in on the team we're playing. So, I, I don't – I know San Diego State's defense is elite. Uh, that's what I've been told by our staff, you know, and Furman's a really good team and they shut Furman out. So we're going to have to spend a lot of time prepping for them. We'll spend a lot of time tomorrow. The players will be off tomorrow, but the coaches will be in work. And uh, as far as Noah Gurley goes, yeah, I, I, I was really fired up on that offensive board put back. I thought he made a great play, drove the ball in. He kicked it out, got Brandon a great shot. Didn't go. He stayed in there, got a put back. I was really happy for him. You know, and then the, the Steely force was out of a timeout. You know, they are two guys in the pick and roll, didn't, didn't do a great job. You know, I thought Reese was coming free for a dunk or a layup, and Noah kind of put his hand in there, got a deflection, knocked it off Reese's uh, leg, and made a huge play for us. So, you know, he played 10 minutes tonight. You know, we were plus three when he was in. He didn't miss both his, I think it, I think his last four games, he was six and nine from three going into that. So didn't make any there, but that's fine. He, he was 0 for 2 uh, against AM. He was 0 for 2 today. That probably means he's set up for a couple of good shooting. Uh, he'll get back in the gym. When we're back, he spends a lot of time in the gym. He'll be primed for a good shooting game, uh, hopefully against uh, San Diego State up in Louisville. Chase Goodrip. Chase Goodrip with the Tuscaloosa News. Uh, I want to ask you about the three-point shooting. You're only able to get off seven attempts in the first half, twice that in the second half. What was Maryland's defense doing in the first half to prevent the looks, and was there a change at halftime to open it up out there? Our defense is similar to ours, to be honest with you. Like, they try to guard pick and roll with two guys. They drop the big. They don't really help off. You know, so they, they just weren't helping off our shooters, and we didn't do, do a good enough job, you know, attacking – they're bigs and pick and roll. And I, th I thought they'd pack up centers in without Reese in. So, you know, we didn't do a great job. The first play out of the second half, we kind of tried to screen the big. Quinterly got downhill, got the layup. They made some other adjustments. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I thought we got – and I'd have to go back and look at this. I thought we got a lot of our threes in the second half off some offensive rebounds, some transition opportunities, kind of broken plays. Because they, they had a good plan and they did a good job of it. We we got to do a better job with our offensive plan against a team that's going to do that. But, yeah, I told our guys, like, one of seven, that's not how we play. Like, I mean, we'd like to get 30-plus up a game. Well, we only got 21 up tonight. But we were able to get on the offensive boards. And, you know, at, at the rim, you know, we got 23 shots at the rim. So did they. And we were both – I mean, we were 12 of 23. Or they were 12 of 23. We were 13 of 23. Kind of the difference was – you know, they ended up taking 21 nine at the rim twos, and we only took eight. So, you know, we were able to take a lot more threes. We, we made six. I think they only made one. So, you know, it's still a difference. You know, we got a little different styles. We were able to get off a few more. Quinterly was able to get a few off the dribble in the second half, which, you know, he's going four or six. He's playing at a pretty high level right now. Here. Yeah, Coach Charlie Potter with Bam Online. When you hear JQ say he's going to tell the guys we're close, but we still have a ways to go, just what does that say about the leadership of the guys coming back that, that want to advance further than Sweet 16? Yeah, I mean, we've been there. Q's been there. We uh, shot 12 of 25 at the free throw line. We got to get back and work on some little small details like some free throws. You know, we Q's been there, been close, went to overtime. You know, we, we've got more in us, I think. So, San Diego State's a great team. We're going to have to prepare really well to play for them. We're going to have to get some better production out of some of our other guys. And I think the leadership that Quinterly, Gurley, even some of our freshmen been giving us is great. But, but Quinterly's the one that's been there, was that close and, and missed, you know. So, we're, we're 
we're going to get our guys focused and prepped, and we're going to do a good job in these next uh, five days leading into this game. Right here. Yeah, Nate, Tony Sakalas, Tide Illustrated. Um, you, you didn't dip too much into your bench this game. Normally a strength of yours. Just what went to the decision to kind of lean more on the starters today? Uh, they were playing well. You know, I think getting into your bench is a lot more important the first game when you play two games in three days. You know, I, I kept asking them if they needed one. Quinterly needed one, come out. Charles needed one. We got Pringle in. You know, I, I, if they needed a break, We'd get them one. If I could tell they were a little tired, we'd get them one. We tried to get some, you know, that you've also got longer timeouts in the NCAA tournament. When these timeouts seem like they go forever. So, you know, you get a little more rest time and your standard media timeouts, you know, and there, we had some timeouts close, you know, rest a guy. I think there was one at maybe the 844 mark. Rest them for those, get the next media timeout. Kind of, they didn't sit that much game time, but we're able to sit a lot of, real time. So, you know, I, I mean, I trust our bench, just our, our starters were playing pretty well and we kind of rolled with them. You know, I first game, I don't, I think Ryland led us in minutes with just over 21 today, all the starters were, you know, at least 27 minutes. So we can go either way with it. You know, Namari played double digit minutes and he was the only one off the bench. It's not like, we don't trust the guys, but I thought the starters were uh, playing well. We we kind of rode with them a little bit more tonight. Nick Kelly, Tuscaloosa News. Uh, you mentioned JQ and you being here two years ago uh, and now to now. I mean, how's your relationship with him evolved over that time? Look, I, I love JQ. I mean, he's got a big heart. He's trying to lead these guys. He's grown up a lot since he got here. You know, it was ironic when – um. We played at A&M. Jay Wright had our game. So me and Jay were talking. You know, Javon came over and gave Jay a hug. And Jay said, man, he's grown up a lot as a leader since I had him. I said, shoot, he's grown up a lot since we first had him. You know, he's made big strides. He's understands what's important. You know, he speaks up when he needs to speak up. I think he's taking ownership of this team. Like, it's his team. It's a lot of guys' team. We got leadership from a lot of guys, but he's definitely one of them. He, and he, he finds a way to come around and play really well at the end of the year, every year. I mean, he was SEC tournament MVP two years ago. I thought he was playing his best balls, best best basketball last year, you know, towards ACL. I'd like to think the that game would have gone a different way if we'd have had him for the full 40 minutes, you know, in the t tournament, but – He's playing his best basketball by far right now, and I think he doesn't want to let his teammates down. He wants to take this team as far as we can go. Mike Rodak with AL.com. I know Brandon always says he'll go, you know, he'll be 100% healthy, but how far do you think he actually was going into it? Do you think he'd be, he'd be able to play 34 minutes? I, you know what? I didn't know how many minutes he'd be able to play. It seemed like the longer he went, the more loose it got, the better he was. I know I saw him kind of wince early. He, he didn't have the same pop. I mean, I, you know, I'm looking at his stats, you know, he ended up three of 11 from two, you know, and at, a lot of those are at the rim. I thought his finishing had been really good, you know, the whole not all the whole conference playing everything. Yeah, you know, he definitely wasn't hundred percent. He's going to tell you he's on percent. He's a tough kid. That's going to play through some stuff and not let people on as how much he's hurt, but it, him and Clark spent a lot of time together over the last 48 hours. And, you know, give him a lot of credit. He was going to go. I mean, there's no question ever about whether he was going to go or not. He just, you know, we'll rest him how we need to rest him until uh, they feel like he's ready to practice. And if we don't have him for a few practices, that's fine. We got to get his groin as close to 100% as we can by Friday. Katie Windham from Bama Central. Nate, you talked about in your opening offensive rebounding. Just how much is Charles, have you seen him improve in that area the last couple of games and maybe his aggressiveness in that area specifically? Yeah, it's been huge. I mean, you look at our second chance points and it's 16 to four. That's a big difference in the game. So I think he's been going, you know, some of these teams will switch us because we don't post a ton. He's been punishing the switch on the glass, you know, it, with our switch attacks a lot of times. Guards going at the big on the perimeter. Well, part of that is we we tell our guards you can't get shot blocked, you know, or we're coming downhill and bigs rotating over. Like, don't get your shot blocked. At least get it up on the rim because now our bigs 
got a guard on him trying to block him out. Like he, we need to punish the switch or punish the smash down. Charles has been doing a great job of that. I mean, look, he had five, five offensive rebounds. You know, he had a third of the team's offensive rebounds. So he's playing great for us. He's a great kid. I mean, you guys have gotten to know him pretty well. I mean, he's very soft-spoken, but the whole angry Chuck deal's very true. He's got a side of him that comes out when we need it to come out. He, and part of this offensive rebound is him playing aggressive and hard and punishing the switches. I mean, he gets gets him on the guards. He gets him on the bigs, too. At, you know, he would have had another one if he didn't have the over-the-back call, but would work on trying to get him not to go over the back and still rebound the ball pretty well. Very bad. Sheila Smoot. Sheila Smoot, Summit Media, Birmingham. With everything going around you and now you're going on the road, you're getting the Sweet 16, what are you saying to this team to stay focused only on basketball and going to the next level? What are you telling them uh, directly? To yeah, them? I mean, we talk about we've got big picture items and we got to be concerned with that. And then we have the details that matter when you get to practice in the games that, that when I say matter, they matter to the game. Like you got to focus on what matters in practice. You got to focus on what matters in the game and you are where your feet are. When we're in practice, we're focusing on that. When we're in video, we're focused on the preparation for the, whether it's practice or game when we're in the game. And we kind of had that talk going into the SEC tournament. I thought our guys did a great job focusing on the task at hand for three straight games in the SEC tournament. I think they've done a really good job for two straight games here. The first two rounds of focusing on what they need to focus on when they're in practice, video, games, whatever it is. And then, you know, the appropriate big picture stuff will take, you know, our guys know what they're dealing with on that other stuff. Okay. Thank you, coach. Thank you.